folks. Okay, let's have a look at the latest and greatest in Pixinsight for color calibration. So newly introduced is the Spectro Photometric Color Calibration, and it's pretty advanced, works really well. It works faster than Photometric Color Calibration in my testing, uh, and it actually is a superior color calibration uh, process uh, versus uh, previous ones. Now, that being said, uh, the other ones do work well, and, and you are free to continue using them, of course. Uh, but I would highly recommend switching over to Spectro uh, Photo Color. Uh, blah, 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 pho, blah, blah, blah. But I would highly recommend switching over to Spectro Photometric Color Calibration. Um, as uh, as I said, it does work really well. So how does it work? How do you set it up and get it going? Really simple to do. And this video is going to be short and sweet, to the point, uh, just to get you up and running with it. So let's switch over to our browser first of all. So uh, I'm on the uh, Pixinsight website. Uh, you want to go to the pixinsight.com uh, website. Uh, in the menus at the top, uh, go to downloads and into the software distribution uh, part of it. Okay, so that's the uh, Pixinsight software distribution. Once you're on that page, uh, if you just scroll down, you'll see Gaia DR3 SP. Um, that is the small set database that you're going to want to download. Uh, you also have available a complete set, but a complete set really is for professional astronomers. Uh, for us backyard astro imagers, um, down to magnitude 25, I believe the small set goes. Um, that uh, is more than sufficient uh, for color calibrating our images that we take. So, um, and it'll save you some download time too and space on your uh, computer. So, download the four files under the Gaia DR3 SP and download those four files. Save them somewhere that you're going to remember because you're going to need to access them. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is get this Gaia DR3 SP data set uh, installed into Pixinsight so it can utilize it for the spectro photometric color calibration process. How do you do that? Really simple to do. Uh, let's go back over to Pixinsight here. We're going to go to process, all processes, and we will go to Gaia in our menu. Uh, open that up, opens this window here, and we want to go to the wrench, and I've already got mine installed as you can see, but you would go to select, uh, go to the directory where you save those four files that you downloaded, and uh, click OK to select them. Uh, they should appear here and uh, if it doesn't uh, default to it uh, you can select the uh, Gaia DR3 uh, SP and then click OK. Your Pixinsight will now use that for spectrophotometric color calibration purposes. Okay so we've got this set up it's really simple to do. Uh, let's go through uh, how you would use this tool, this new tool in Pixinsight for your color calibration. Alright so Back in Pixinsight, you're going to want to go to the uh, Spectro Photometric Color Calibration. Now your Pixinsight should have updated and this should now be included in it. Um, so it would be under uh, Color Calibration, so Process, Color Calibration, and Photometric, uh, sp sorry, Spectro Photometric Color Calibration. So we click that, opens up this window here, and what do you want to do here? So basically, really easy to do easy to set up white reference I would the, the default is an average spiral galaxy I would leave it at that default it works really well for the majority of images that you're going to be running through this process um, ideal quantum efficiency curve now you can leave it at the default ideal quantum efficiency curve it works well I've tested it um, if you happen to know what sensor you're using if your sensor is listed you can specifically uh, pick that so I'm using the Sony uh, I IMX 571 sensor in my QHY 260M camera, 268M camera. Um, so I could select that. Now I didn't select it. I in my test I tried the ideal quantum, uh, the the ideal QA, QE curve uh, setting, and it did work really well. So you can choose that as a default if your sensor isn't listed. If your sensor is listed, uh, you can also select your specific sensor as well. Uh, filter. Uh, you're going to want to tell it what filters you're using. So uh, I'm using Optolong filters. 
you might be using different filters but whatever the case uh, there is a selection of filters that you can use if in doubt if in doubt um, you could just use the botter uh, red filter for the for the the red filter and the botter uh, green and the botter blue as example or you could use um, optolong as well optolong is is pretty standard filter for the most part so um, but if your filter is listed here and you see it by all means pick it so that's what i did so uh, if i go back here to the red filter um, and i go down to uh, Optolong, I see Optolong red filter is listed there and I've basically done that for the green and the blue as well. I've just selected the appropriate filter that I used to capture the data. And just to hit on this real quick, uh, if you're doing narrowband filters, simply uh, click on narrowband uh, filters that you're using them and you can uh, input uh, the wavelength and the bandwidth of the filters that you're using okay so uh, very simple to do there back to broadband though uh, broadband so we've got a white reference setup we've got our quantum efficient uh, ef efficiency curve uh, selected uh, we've got a red green and blue filter selected we're going to uh, generate graphs we want to see what those graphs uh, look like um, just for fun uh, if, if anything unless you're really really into it and you want to analyze the graph which you can certainly do um, it'll pop up a graph like this and show you uh, the result of the color calibration. So you can leave that enabled or disable it, whatever you choose. Um, you're going to want to apply color calibration, so leave that checked off. Uh, catalog uh, search, uh, we're going to want to make sure that we select the Gaia DR3SP if it is not already selected. Automatic limit magnitude is fine. Um, you could, of course, put a different limiting magnitude in there if you want but I didn't have any trouble with the default of automatic uh, limit magnitude uh, signal evaluation is rolled up um, by default so there really isn't anything in there to change uh, defaults work fine um, in my tests and the next thing that we're going to want to do is just set up the uh, background neutralization. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Uh, background neutralization, if it's not already checked off, uh, check that off. Make sure that it's set. Uh, default settings work well. Region of interest, though, you're going to want to uh, make a region of interest for the background. So you want to basically tell the spectrophotometric color calibration process what is background in your image. Um, so what I did was I just uh, zoomed in here like this and I drew a I just drew a preview window on an area of background so as we can see here this is just neutral background and then what I'm going to want to do in my spectrophotometric color calibration is uh, check off region of interest if it isn't checked off and select from preview and we go over here and we can select preview 2 which is the one we just created uh, your preview could be preview 1 or whatever it happens to be mine's preview 2 click OK so it now knows a region of interest that's going to specify what is background in the image and that is it so the only other thing you have to do now is take the uh, blue triangle and drop it onto your image and the color calibration spectro photometric color calibration will get to work uh, doing its thing and it, it actually works pretty fast like I said it works really well works pretty fast it's a, it's a little bit faster than the photometric color calibration as I mentioned um, but there it's done see didn't take long and I don't have I have a I have a fast system but it's not overly fast it's not a crazy gaming system or anything like that so um, Considering this worked, this, this process pretty fast, uh, I, I think it's uh, fair to say that the spectrophotometric color calibration is faster. Color calibrating. Here's our graph as it's done, and we can close off this, and we would want to reset the uh, stretch uh, on this as well since it changes. And so we'll just do this, and bingo, there we've got our image color calibrated using the spectro photometric color calibration tool.
Okay, so that is it. Pretty simple, easy to do. Hope this video is helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and like and leave a comment, all those good things. It does help the channel grow and helps get these videos out to other people that may not be aware of the channel and are looking for this type of information on astrophotography and image processing. So again, thank you very much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. You guys take care. We'll see you again soon and clear skies.